Hi, this is a Rob Watson Media Vlog. Just uh, ambling around, doing things, passing on thoughts about stuff. If you want to get in contact with me, go to the website, which is robwatsonmedia.net, or you can message me on Twitter or Instagram at Rob W Media. Hello, Rob Watson here. Um, it's a lovely sunny day. I think it's Friday the 26th of February. Um, as you can tell from my pallid, pale, ghost-like complexion, I've not been out in the sunshine for a while. Uh, so it's going to be something that I'm <laughs> hoping to do uh, a little bit more often. I've just come to West Coast Park in Leicester, which is not far away from where I live, uh, just to share some thoughts and... Um, and capture the moment and there's quite a few people out with their dogs it's very much a spring spring day around here um, so I'll one of the things that is actually has been bugging me since the last uh, vlog thing that I did was my description of the Myers-Briggs the uh, Jungian uh, personality uh, not personality uh, psychological types uh, so this time I've, I've written some no, notes and I've brought them over just in case I kind of get lost. Uh, but I still think it's worth developing some thoughts about this and to think about how uh, what the, the lockdown process has taught me or I've learned from it in terms of how I function and how I work and what I really need to do to be a bit more confident about that as uh, a, an, in, an introverted uh, person on the introverted uh, pe uh, psychological um, spectrum, if you like, and how the other factors that Jung talks about are, are something that we also need to account for and build into our thinking and our understanding and the way that we communicate and interact with other people. So Jung talked about uh, there are two orientations, there's introversion and extroversion, and the different being that if you are an extrovert you're more likely uh, and none of this is solid because it's fluid it's dynamic I think a, a useful way to think about this is it's like a, you know you're, one of the, the leaps that Jung made is that our, our psychology isn't fixed uh, other forms of psychology might suggest that there are kind of clear boundaries that were a bit like software that were a bit like hardware and that these things are predetermined and we have these fixed biases and what we need to do is compensate for them and no actually it's a dynamic learning process we're capable of creative change uh, and that's why why one of the reasons why i like Jung's approach um, but what he talks about is <coughs> these orientations between introversion and extroversion being the case of where do you draw your energy from you know, do you draw your energy from other people? Do you like going to parties? Or are you like me when you go to parties or social gatherings that you get tired very quickly and that your energy gets used up and you have to retreat back to a quiet place and a, and a room um, of, of your, your, it's your solitude, if you like. It doesn't mean to say that you're shy. It doesn't mean to say that you're antisocial. It just means that, you know, you can't do it for prolonged periods of times. And this relates also to... Uh, the the way in which we oops, my, <laughs> nice dogs <laughs> so so you know how how we you know what how we focus on our um, the world around us it makes a difference so following that and and if you look at the the Myers Briggs kind of order of of these things although again there's a kind of dynamic interaction between them is the uh, intuitive or sensing uh, type and it, what Jung meant by that was you know a lot of what we do is founded on a lot of what I do is drawn from my intuition I can't really explain why immediately why I know something and how I know something but it comes from something within um, and uh, we live in a world which has shifted towards the the other variety the sensing variety where you have to measure things and calculate things and demonstrate that um, our um, understanding of the world is empirically grounded and that you know modern modern science is 
in in one of the ways that it's uh, characterized is about you know, purely measuring things pure, purely accounting for things in terms of uh, their the the things things that are observable the things that are measurable either directly or indirectly so you end up with things like you know, a focus on behaviorism uh, and I'm quite critical of behavioural sciences. Sciences, I think, is a lot of it is bunkum. And Jung thought a lot of it was bunkum because what it ignores is it ignores, and interestingly, Einstein was an advocate of the intuitive. And he was an advocate of, you know, using thought experiments for ideas to come forward out of the symbolic realm. And Jung's argument is, is that, you know, the unconscious... Uh, both individual and collective is, you know, largely unexplored and unmappable. Uh, Jung kind of created a bit of a map for us to be able to figure out our way around it in some ways. But on a day-to-day -day basis, on a personal basis, it doesn't talk to us directly. It comes through in our dreams, it comes through in our creative imagination, it comes through us in our, in our, in our quirks and ticks and psychoses and our problems um, but it also comes through in our you know those moments when we're relaxed when we're playful and we you know, as a society I, I think it's very difficult to get across to people that the intuitives um, were once you know I suppose dominant in society but we've moved towards a kind of the sensors, the people who can count things, the people who can look for concrete reality and concrete experience. So the, the lockdown kind of puts you in a position where you have to think and adapt and change. So if you're sat by yourself working on a computer, uh, doing team and Zoom meetings, you can't sense in the same way. You haven't got the same physical reality around you. You can't imagine what's going on whereas intuitives find that a little bit easier and I've always said this is like the difference between le being left-handed and right-handed you can use both hands in some way but you have a preference for one I'm left-handed uh, I um, uh, uh, you know taught at school everybody else could learn to play the guitar or to play tennis because they um, are easily they can model other people easily because the majority of people are right-handed but when you're left-handed you kind of you, you don't get well I didn't grasp that as as some you know as, as easily as others um, and it's it you know you, somebody like Paul McCartney talks about being left-handed and how he had they had to you know reverse change the strings on the guitar so that he could play it properly but he learned to play a right-handed guitar from his left hand which is a you know it's ups for, for most right-handed people it's upside down and and that is a good analogy for the way that we might think about our psychological types as well is that there's a is there a right way round for us is there, you know is there, is there a wrong way round for us then the other third factor uh, pair of relationships that Jung talk about was the, um, the 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 values base or the thinking uh, function, and I'm a values driven person. So in the Myers Briggs typology, it's F as opposed to T. So uh, it, it, its feeling is is how it's described, but it's actually about values and so that feeling that comes from within whether something's right or wrong whether it has a purpose whether it's something which is you know I, I can get motivated quite easily in my indignation or my support for something without having to think it through uh, and that can be a bad thing I've learned to uh, certainly as a, a being research active um, is something that you learn to do in terms of the stages that you have to go through now some people can you know are, are driven to the other side where they have to think things through very logically and precisely and you have to put it in a form of a process diagram uh, and you have to look at what the steps are that you're going to take through a, pro a project or a proposal and you have to give people concrete evidence they have to sense it a sense of what it's about before they can move on to it kind of I make those intuitive leaps into thinking this is right you know this the, if if it fits with my values if it goes against my values then you know I can be quite scornful um, 
and that appreciation that people have for those kind of models it doesn't fit well with a lot of organizational structures uh, we t you know our organizations our leadership teams often will draw from the same kind of people with the same kind of psychological types they get grouped and that's where you end up I think with groupthink which is one of the issues that I think it's incredibly important to try and avoid is that we all think in the same way and our cognitive diversity is something that we should be exploring and experimenting with. The final uh, ish, uh, uh, pairing on the Myers-Briggs, which Jung didn't include as one of the primary functions, but he does talk about it, is the distinction between what on the Myers-Briggs thing is the uh, uh, J and the P, which is judgment or prospecting. Now, judgment on the basis of, I, I always think of this in terms of timekeeping. I like to be early for things. I pack in advance. I like things to be in good order. I, d despite being a uh, intuitive, and values driven, I do like structure. I like things to be in a proper, I like people to go through the proper processes. I like people to engage with me in the proper pro, in, in, a, in an ordered sense, not just springing things on uh, because there's been discussions elsewhere, but other people kind of like the randomness and the spontaneity. I am less good at spontaneity. Um, and I've got friends who are very good at spontaneity and while, while I find it frustrating to get a knock on the door saying oh do you fancy coming out for a drive or a phone call asking me to do something spontaneously actually I really value that because it brings me out of my I, I can far too often sit and just focus on myself and think you know everything has to be planned and organized and then I overthink things so there's a, a negative side to this and put this in the context of Jung's other framework um, for psych our, our psyche, this dynamic interaction. He talked about the shadow uh, and the shadow is, if you like, the opposite. So one of the things, you know, f for me, my, my shadow, you know, people who I, sh I, I tend to run a mile from are people who are extroverts, who are sensors, ES, uh, who are thinkers, so EST, P's. Um, and for me, they're, they're kind of the people I get on with less because they have a certain style and approach to doing things, which kind of rubs me up the wrong way. And it's fairly consistent as well. Uh, but at least I'm becoming more aware of that, what that is, what that means and how that works. So just thinking this through in terms of what I've learned from being at home during the lockdown and how I would hope to approach moving forward after the lockdown and as we start to get the vaccination rolled out and as we start to think about you know we've been through a period where lots of people have taken on lots of different new approaches uh, I think what's going to happen is the all that activity that people have been undertaking is going to be there's going to be a pause for thought and people are going to be saying yeah do we do we really need to keep that going is that really suited to what we want to achieve and yes we put all of these things in place but it's not the solution it's not the answer and there's been a rush to judgment from many people about what we can what we could what we should be doing and a kind of you know at the moment as things are people are rethinking through what changes are actually going to be for the long term we might reorient and we might start to ask different kinds of questions and include different kinds of people who think in different kind of ways into the the conversations about this and they have to be conversations so there is a a really encouraging focus on deliberation now and one of the things i've learned and i find very useful from doing this process of doing vlogs and from doing podcasts and from listening to other podcasts is I like, I really value the podcasts where people don't know the answer, where they've not made their mind up in advance. But what they're doing is they're thinking it through and they start in one position, but then after considering different issues, looking at it from different perspectives, including different people's experience, that draws you to a different way of thinking and a different point, uh, a different focus point. And it might just be a small change, but it can have a big difference, a big impact in the future. One of the useful 
ways of thinking about this is the idea that we're not interested in opinions. I share lots of opinions via social media. Um, you know, if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you'll probably notice that my opinions are all over the place. Uh, I, I, well, consistent, but you know, I like to scatter them around, <laughs> and, and many other people do as well. I'm not doing anything unique. However, I think experience and relating your experience is a stronger way and thing to do to bring about social change and to build a sense of community and to build networks and to build a sense of identity because people can't take your experience away from you. And particularly when you look at how you felt about something and you know, what, what it was that was you know, chimed with you a good or bad in a certain situation or in a uh, in, in a dur, dur, in, in a social process that you've feel like you've gone through like the lockdown so our experience and accounting for our experience is uh, a good starting point so I've waffled on for a bit uh, if you want to you know, keep in contact send me a message my podcasts go out via the website which is robwatermedia.net or they go up on uh, Instagram, not, uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Rob W Media, and my podcasts go out via iTunes and Google, and I'm, I think I've got Spotify on there and Amazon Music as well. If you want to download them, uh, one focus. It's a bit of a test bed, the Rob Watson Media stuff that I do, uh, just testing out things, and I'm getting a bit more confident about using it as a space to test out things and ideas and approaches. And the other one is the Distraction Therapy podcast, which is where I'm doing sound walks. And hopefully I'm going to get out this afternoon and record a sound walk. So watch out for that. Uh, but yeah, you know, thanks for your time. Uh, send me a message if you want to take part in one of these discussions at some point. Uh, if not, I'll just carry on waffling and <laughs> sharing whatever thoughts are, are kind of ticking away at the back of my mind uh, for the time being. But until next time, thanks very much and stay safe. Thanks for watching this. If you want to get in contact, the website is robwatsonmedia.net or you can message me on Twitter or Instagram at robwmedia.